The following review has been made for College Prep Math. Hey y'all, welcome back. We've got one last video for y'all taking College Prep Math, and that is we are going to go over the exam review. So this exam is really going to just cover topics that you can expect to see on a TSI exam. So yeah, the, the primary focus of this is going to be linear and quadratic functions, some proportions, mm -hmm. proportional reasoning, ratios, percents, that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, let's, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with some linear equations. We're just solving for x here. So I'll just work these out. Number one, we're going to first distribute the 5. 5 times 3.5. And just to uh, you know, rest your mind a little bit, you are going to be allowed to use a calculator on this. So you know, make sure that you're doing that. Don't try to do everything in your head. There's no reason not to do the arithmetic in the calculator. So 5 times 3.5x is going to be 17.5x. And 5 times 1 half, that's just really 1 half of 5, is going to be 2.5. That equals 155. Next, we're going to use a series of properties of equality here. First, we'll add 2.5 uh, 2 to both sides. So 155 plus 2.5 is 157.5. So we've got 17.5x equals 157.5. And then we need to divide both sides by 17.5x. So 157.5 divided by 17.5 is 9. Now, I, I'm using a calculator behind the scenes here. You know, I'm just kind of typing it in as we go. Make sure that you're using a calculator too. I don't want to be seeing anybody doing 157.5 divided by 17.5 long division style by hand. There's no reason to do that. Um, just make sure you're using the calculator. Number two, first we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. So 3x minus 5x is going to be negative 2x. I have the plus 1 equals 10 left over. Then I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and that'll give me negative 2x equals 9. And dividing both sides by negative 2 is going to give me negative 4.5. Number 3, I'll start by um, distributing both of these fractions on, on both sides. So a fifth of 5 is going to be just 1, and a fifth of 15, or in other words, um, 15 divided by 5 is going to be 3. Over on the right-hand side, I'm going to distribute that 1 half. Multiply half by 4x and a half by negative 6. Half of 4 is 2, and half of 6 is 3. From here, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so negative x plus 3 equals negative 3. Then I'm going to subtract 3 on both sides. So I get negative x equals negative 6. And then I will uh, divide both sides by negative 1. So x equals 6. Number 4, start off the same way as we did uh, several of these so far. We're going to distribute that 0.25, which is 1 fourth. So a quarter of 80 is 20. And a quarter of 20 is 5. So 20x plus 5 equals 10x plus 15. Then I'm going to subtract this 10x from both sides to force that x over to the left hand side. 20 minus 10 is 10. And uh, we still have the plus 5 equals 15. Then I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides to get 10x equals 10. This one's going to work out really nicely. 10 divided by 10 is 1. So x is, is going to be 1. Okay, number five. First, we will distribute the six. So I've got 18x minus 24 minus 5 equals 6x plus 7. Then I'm going to combine my like terms, negative 24 minus 5. So negative 24 minus 5 is going to be negative 29. Then I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. 18 minus 6 is going to be 12, so 12x minus 29 equals 7. Now I've got, got it down to this two-step equation. I'm going to add 29 to both sides. Get 7 plus 29, which is 36. Look how nicely this is turning out. 
36 is divisible by 12. Uh, uh, 36 divided by 12 is 3. We get x equals 3 for number 5. For number 6, we will distribute the point 2, that's 1 fifth, to both x and to 8. We'll get 0.1x plus 0.2x plus 8 times 0.2, which is 1.6 equals 4. Then I'm going to combine my like terms here. 1 tenth plus 2 tenths is 3 tenths. Then I'm going to subtract 1.6 from both sides. So 4 minus 1.6 is going to be 2.4. Finally, I'm going to divide both sides by 0.3 and I'll get x equals 8. Number seven, we've got 4x minus 3 equals 2x plus 7. I'll start by subtracting 2x from both sides. So that'll give me 2x minus 3 equals 7. Then I'm going to add 3 to both sides. So I get 2x equals 10. Divide both sides by 2, and I get x equals 5. This is going to be our last just straight up solving a linear equation. You could definitely expect that there's going to be some of these on your final exam. Um, so just make sure you know how to work these first seven problems pretty well. Number eight, now we're getting into some word problems, and so there'll be several like these where uh, you'll have to translate, essentially, um, an, an English statement into an algebraic equation. So eight says, after eating dinner with a group of friends, the bill totals 84.50. If the group wants to leave a 20% tip, how much is the tip? So really the question that is being asked here is, what is 20% of 84.50. That's really what the question's asking. So I'm going to translate this English question into an algebraic question. So what is, in other words, x equals, the what is what we're looking for, so that's the x, is is equals, 20% as a fraction or as a decimal is 0.20. Of indicates multiplication, and then 84.5 is just itself. So our answer is going to be whatever 0.2 times 84.5 is, and that is 16.9. So to answer the question, you know, we did the algebra here, but it says if the group wants to leave a 20% tip, how much is the tip? So let's answer this as a complete sentence, or at least as a complete thought. Uh, the tip, or I'll sh I should say, let's say it like this. 20% um, of 84.50 is $16.90. That's, that's a good way to answer this. Number nine says a new larger bottle of shampoo contains 40% more shampoo than the amount in the original bottle. The original bottle contains 70 ounces. How many ounces of shampoo are in the new larger bottle? Okay, so we want to know what is, and if the new bottle contains 40% more than the original bo bottle, so we want to say we have that 100% that we started with plus the 40% that, that we have more than. We want to say what is 140% of 70 ounces? Okay, so that's, that's the question we're, we're trying to answer here. So let's, let's translate that. What is 140%, 1.4, of 70? So 1.4 times 70 is going to be 98. So we do get 98 here, but let's make sure we're answering the question that's being asked. Okay, so there are 98 ounces of shampoo in the new bottle. Number 10 says, Sydney wants to buy a shirt for $25. Sales tax in her city is 8%. How much does Sydney have to pay for the shirt, including tax? So again, this is gonna be another case where we gotta add 100% to the percent increase. 
So we're going to start with the $25, and that's going to be our 100%, and then we're going to add 8%. So really the question here is, what is 108%, because that's the 100% that it started as, plus the 8% sales tax of $25? I always like rewriting the question like this because I feel like setting up the problem is, is a lot easier. But not, and all of these so far have been set up very similarly. Sometimes the wording is a little different, and, but writing it down as an English question or whatever your language is uh, that you speak um, can be helpful before you try to rewrite it as an algebraic statement. So what is 108% of 25? So that's going to be 27. Okay, so let's go ahead and answer this in context. We'll say Sydney will have to pay $27 for the shirt, including tax. Number 11. Cameron has a salary of $2,800 a month. He budgets $252 a month for his savings. What percentage is his monthly budget of his savings? So yeah, this one's gonna be set up a little bit differently because it's saying $252 is what percent of $2,800? So again, just first I'm gonna rewrite it as an English question. So now when I go to translate that, it'll be a little easier. And say 252 is what percent, that's x over 100, of 2800. Now this is going to be a little bit, you know, there's a little bit more to it than, than the previous few problems because we're going to have to solve for x here. Uh, but the setup is still very similar. So here I'll simplify this a little bit. Um, I'm going to divide 2800 by 100. Uh, so 2800 divided by 100 is 28. So I can rewrite this as 252 equals 28x. And then dividing both sides of this by 28 gives me 9. So now, um, just to be clear here, this number is the percent. Uh, because we did this over 100 business, we don't have to go back and reconvert it. Uh, we can just say that it's 9%. So his Cameron's um, how do I want to say this? Cameron's savings is 9% of his monthly budget. Not bad. I think, you know, you could probably do better. Um, I guess it just all depends on your living circumstances, but you definitely want to at least put, you know, as much as you can into your savings. Save it for a rainy day. All right, number 12. Amaya's wages are $3,700 plus 5% commission on monthly sales. So this is the 100% plus 5%. It says write a function that expresses the relationship between her wages and her monthly sales. Okay, so her wages are going to depend on her monthly sales. So the monthly sales is the input, the wage is the output, and her wage, you know, I'm just going to translate this initial uh, a sentence here. It's, almost, it's pretty much already set up the way I would write it anyway. The wages are, so the wage equals 3,700 plus 5% of her commission. In other words, the sales. So there's her function says, how much did Amaya sell this month if her paycheck was $4,038? Well, if her wages were $4,038, we can substitute that in for W. And what we're going to do here is solve for S, which is the sales. So we'll start by subtracting both sides by 3,700. I'll get 338 equals... 0.05s, dividing that by 0 0.05 uh, gives me, let's see here, 6,000, uh, sorry, 760.
All right, so that's that's essentially our answer. Um, but again, we always want to make sure to go back and rewrite this um, for these word problems. We could say Amaya sold uh, six thousand seven hundred sixty dollars worth of what is she even selling? <laughs> even say? No, it doesn't say. Uh, we'll just say merchandise this month, and it's not Amaya's. Maya. There we go. Actually, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that. Maya, Amaya, I don't know. Number 13 says the length of a rectangle. So here's a rectangle. You know, start talking about a rectangle, I'm going to draw one right off the bat. The length, and uh, I'll let the, this longer side be the length, the taller side be the width. It says the length is five centimeters less than three times the width. So three times the width minus five. And the width is just whatever this is. The perimeter of the rectangle is 22. Find the length and the width. Okay, so the perimeter is 22, meaning if we add up all four of these sides, we should get 22. So we've got two of these widths, and we've got two of these um, lengths. All right, so two times the width plus two times the length is going to be 22 centimeters. I'm going to rewrite the length in terms of the width so that we can actually start solving this equation for one of the variables. So instead of writing this L for the length, I'm going to write 3W minus 5 because it's 5 centimeters less than 3 times the width. And now I'm going to just uh, solve this like I did those first seven problems earlier. I'm going to distribute the two. So I get 2W plus 6W minus 10 equals 22. We're going to combine our like terms. So 8w minus 10 equals 22. Then add 10 to both sides. 8w equals 32. And finally we get w equals 4. Okay, so we've determined the width. We can say that width is 4 centimeters. But we still have to find the length, because it is asking for both. Now, luckily, finding the length will be significantly easier than finding the width. There's not really going to be any algebra. It's just straight up arithmetic, because we know the length is 3 times the width of minus 5. So the length will be 3 times the width, which is 4, minus 5. And so we get 12, uh, 12 minus 5 equals 7. So the length is 7 centimeters. And you could always go back and check this. 4 plus 4 plus 7 plus 7 should add up to 22. I assume it does. Um, but yeah, so there's 13. Number 14 says, Caitlin had a full tank of gas before she left on a trip. She noticed at the start of the trip that her odometer read 23,420 miles. When she returned from her trip, she filled up her gas tank, which cost her $34.32 for 12 gallons. Then she noticed her odometer read 23,792 miles. Use this information to fall, find the following rates. Part A, what is the price of gasoline in dollars per gallons? Okay, so if it costs her $34.32, for 12 gallons, okay, I'll throw in some, uh, some units here. This is dollars per gallon. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Uh, you know what? I'll just start a, a fraction over here. Dollars per gallon, just to stay consistent here. You can kind of see what, how I'm setting up these fractions. Okay, so if it's $34.32 for 12 gallons, then we want to know what's the price for one gallon. Now, since we're just finding dollars per gallon here, we can just go ahead and divide this. X divided by 1 is just X. So whatever this quotient is, that's going to be our answer. So, uh, yeah, the price is going to be... I'll go ahead and type this into my calculator. 
go. Uh, 34.32 divided by 12 is 286. So it's 286. What the? Or I'll say, so let's just type it out as a, as an, as a sentence here. Uh, the price of gas is $2.86 per gallon. Part B says, what is the fuel consumption in miles per gallon? So first we need to figure out how many miles she traveled. Okay, so the miles traveled is going to be 23,792. That's what the odometer read at the end, minus what the odometer read at the beginning, which is 23,420 miles. So subtracting these two numbers, 23,792 minus 23,420, going to be 372. All right, now that's not our answer here. We just want to know how many miles she actually went. So that we know um, the fuel consumption miles per gallon. Well, this is how many miles she traveled, and she used 12 gallons. Okay, make a mention here. Gallons used is 12. What we want to do is divide this. So the miles per gallon Will be 12 over. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, 372 and then 12 gallons. There we go. So 372 divided by 12 gives me 31. So that means that the fuel consumption in miles per gallon is 31 miles per gallon. So the fuel consumption. 31 miles per gallon. Basically, that's just saying, like, how uh, efficient is your car? You know, how far can you go based on how much gas you have? And finally, how much would the gas cost to travel 155 miles? Okay, so we can use this same, we, we already know how much the price of gas is. And uh, so the price of gas is 286 per gallon. Okay, so the cost per gallon is two hundred is two dollars eight. Here, let's put let's set it up like this. The cost. This is wants to make this a cosine function. Uh, cost per gallon. Well, let's see here. Um, we wanted to, uh, you know what? Yeah, so the I'll just write it out. So the cost is two dollars and eighty six cents per gallon. Okay, the distance we're trying to travel is one hundred fifty five miles. Okay, we also know that we get thirty one miles per gallon. All right, so let's try to put these three pieces of information together. First, let's figure out how many gallons we're going to use. Okay, so let's answer that question first. How many gallons will we use? Okay, so to determine how many gallons we're going to use, we're going to say, okay, well, we need to go 155 miles, and we get 31 miles per gallon. So we're just going to divide 155 by 31, and this should give us our number of gallons we're going to use. 155 divided by 31 is going to be 5 gallons. And then so the total cost, so this is now we're just going to say what's the total cost for the entire trip 
what we're going to do is multiply the number of gallons by the distance that we're traveling. So 5 times 155 is 775. No, whoa, 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 hold up here. Uh, no, sorry, 5 gallons times, not 155, times 286, my bad. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the number of gallons we're using times how much they cost. I have to go back and delete what I said earlier. Um, but yeah, so 5 times 286, yeah, I got the, <laughs> typed it in without really thinking too much about what I'm ty typing in here. And I'm thinking, what, 150, that, the 775, that's way too much. Yeah, so anyway, $14.30 is, is what we want. So the cost, now we can answer a question, the cost to travel 155 miles is $14.30. Number 15 says the mass of a liquid varies directly with its volume. If a liquid has a mass of 9 kilograms and a volume of 4 liters, and answer these questions. Okay, so let's make some notes here. We, we see that the um, has a mass of nine kilograms, a volume of four liters. Okay, it says write an equation that relates the mass to the volume. So the mass in terms of the volume is going to be nine kilograms for, per four liters times the volume. Okay, 9 kilograms per 4 liters. Then B, what is the volume of the same liquid if its mass is 27 kilograms? So we'll set the mass to be 27 kilograms, and we'll solve for the volume here. So I would recommend you do this in your calculator, but basically what we need to do is divide 27 divided by 9 fourths. If it's easier, you can use a decimal. 9 fourths is going to be equivalent to 2.25 just want to divide by 2.25 that works as well uh, but we do get a our volume is 12 liters now the liters is coming from the originally said our volume was given in liters so we're just going to stay consistent with that number 16 the length of a violin string varies inversely with the frequency of its vibrations a violin string 14 inches long vibrates at a frequency of 450 cycles per second. So first, write an equation that relates the length of the violin string to its frequency. Okay. We should have an inverse relationship here. So instead of um, this constant being multiplied like it did in a direct variation, it's an inverse variation. We're going to divide by our inverse. So here's how you would set it up. Uh, the length in terms of the frequency is going to equal um, the product here. 14 times 450 is 6300 divided by the frequency. But notice here we're dividing by the input rather than multiplying by it. All right. So yeah, well, that's it. That's all. It's just asking for the equation there. B says find the frequency in cycles per second of a 12 inch string. So if the length is 12, we want to find the frequency. And so to solve an equation like this, uh, I think it's easy, easiest to take it in two steps here. First, multiply both sides by F to kind of kill off that fraction. And then we're going to divide both sides by 12. So we get 6300 divided by 12, which is 525. So the units here are going to be cycles per second. C says find the length of a string that has a frequency of 420 cycles per second. So in this case, we're going to find the length in terms of the frequency 420 equals 6300 divided by the frequency which is like we said 420. So we're just going to 
uh, we're, we're just gonna divide this. That's all we need to do here. 6,300 divided by 420 is 15. Okay, so yeah, so the length is 15, and what were the units there? Uh, inches. Number 17 says Matthew is painting a wooden fence. One can paint, or one can of paint, can paint 40 wooden boards on the fence. How many cans of paint does Matthew need to paint 140 wooden boards? So we want to set up a proportion here. Let's do cans to paints. Uh, cans to paints. Cans to boards. Okay. So let's see here. We've got one can of paint can do 40 wooden boards. So we want to know how many cans does it take to do 140 wooden boards. So we're going to just do a little cross products property or cross multiplication, sometimes known as the butterfly method. And we're going to multiply 1 times 140 and set that equal to x times 40. So 1 times 140 is just 140. And then we've got 40x. So dividing 140 by 40 gives me, uh, oops, I mistyped that, getting 3 and a half. And that would be cans of paint. Number 18 says Daniela's fish tank has cloudy water. To make the water clear, she can add three milliliters of cleaner for every 10 gallons of water. How many milliliters of cleaner does she need to add if she has 25 gallons of, her, of water in her fish tank? Okay, so this is going to be another proportion problem. So we're going to relate the milliliters of cleaner to the gallons of water. Okay. So she can add three millimeters of cleaner for every 10 gallons of water. So how many millimeters of cleaner does she need to add if she has 25 gallons of water? Another case of uh, cross multiplication here, just like the previous problem. We're going to multiply uh, 10 times x, that's 10x. 3 times 25 is going to be 75. Dividing both sides by 10, we get 7.5 milliliters. Number 19, one serving of milk is 88 calories. How many calories are in a bottle of milk if there are 6.5 serving, servings per bottle? Okay, so one serving is 88 calories. We wanna know, you know how many calories we have for 6.5 servings. Another <laughs> proportion problem. Uh, kinda getting a little redundant here, if you ask me, but here we go. So we're gonna do, um, I guess which direction? I'll, I'll go uh, servings to calories. And it doesn't really matter like what you put on top and what you put on bottom for these proportion problems. Like, I could do calories over servings and still get the same answer. Just want to make sure you're consistent across your fraction. So one serving is 88 calories. If I were to put the calories up top, I just do 88 over one. And then we want to know if there's six points. 6.5 servings, how many calories are in that? So again, if I were to flip this and do calories over servings, that's fine. You just have 88 over 1 equals x over 6.5. You'll still approach it the same way. Use this cross products property again. 1 times x is x. And then 6.5 times 88 is 752 calories. For 20, it says gas is $1.56 $1 per half gallon. I've never seen gas, the cost of gas, 
measured in half gallons? That's bizarre. Come on. <laughs> I think this question is just trying to trick you. Okay, anyway, how much does it cost to fill a 15 gallon tank? Okay, so if we're just going to go with gallons, or I said cost per gallon probably makes more sense here. So the price per gallon is going to be 156 per half gallon. So that's 0.5. Kind of hate that they did that there, but um, how much does it cost to, uh, so X, we're trying to find how much does it cost to fill a 15 gallon tank. So once again, we've got a proportion set up here. We're going to cross the cross products property, half of X, 0.5 X equals 15 times 1.56 is 23.4. So if I divide both sides by 0.5, get 46.8 so how much does it cost well it costs 46 dollars and 80 cents All right, now it looks like that's about the end of the road for linear equations and proportional reasoning. So now we're getting into quadratic expressions and equations. So this first section is asking us to factor the following expression. 21 says we've got x squared plus 11x plus 28. Since the leading coefficient is 1, we can take a little shortcut here and just find two numbers that multiply to give me 28, but add up to 11. So those two numbers, you know, if you think about it long enough, the factors of 28 here are gonna be like one and 28, um, two and 14. Oh, neither one of those is gonna work. We're looking for a pair that adds up to 11 here. Uh, let's see, is 28 divisible by three? I don't think it is, no, it's not. Uh, but it is divisible by 4, and actually this is going to be our last factor pair, 4 times 7. And you can, as you can see, four, time, 4 plus 7 is 11. So this is going to be the factor pair that we're interested in. That's going to give us our two constant terms in these binomials, x plus 4 times x plus 7. And there's no solving here, it's just asking us to factor. Now factoring is a good technique that you can use to solve quadratic equations, but these are not equations. There's no equal sign. So there's, we're not trying to figure out what x is. We're just trying to figure out what the factors are. So since 4 times 7 equals 28 and 4 plus 7 equals 11, then we have our two factors. Now 22 is a little bit more complicated because that first number is not a 1. But what we need to do is we need to try to rewrite this e uh, expression in such a way that we break up this middle term and we can, um, uh, uh, we want to try to break up this middle term so that we can use factoring by grouping. So to do that, I still want to come up with two numbers that multiply to something and add up to something where they still need to add up to negative 17. But the product they need to multiply to needs to be 4 times negative 15. 4 times negative 15 is, let's see, uh, 15 and 15 is 30 times 2 is 60, so that's going to be 60. Oh, negative 60. I'm sorry. Yeah, negative 60. So 4 times negative 15. Just double checking my calculator. Pretty sure that's right. Oh, even me. Yeah, we'll still go back to the calculator to do some basic arithmetic here, so don't feel bad about it. Um, okay, so negative 60, that's the one that we're trying to find factor pairs for that add up to negative 17. And I'm just going to, you know, kind of go through the motions here. 1 times negative 60. I'm not going to bother making the smaller number negative on any of my trials here because the sum needs to be negative. So the bigger number has is, is got to be the negative one. Now, this is clearly not going to add up to uh, negative 17. So I'm going to keep going. I've got 2 times negative 30 will also give me negative 60. Doesn't quite get there because that sum is negative 28. Let's keep going. 3 times negative 20, and there we go. We didn't have to go too far to find it. 
So these are gonna be the two coefficients of the two linear terms here, plus three y, minus 20 y, minus 15. This is gonna be the only way that you can really break down this middle term so that you can actually execute this factoring strategy. So to, to actually do the next step, we need to find the GCF of the first two terms and the last two terms. The GCF of the first two terms is just gonna be y, so if I factor out a y out of those first two terms, I get four y plus three. And my GCF of the last two terms is gonna be negative five. So if I factor out a minus five, I get four y plus three. This step right here is where you wanna stop just to make sure that you're doing it right. And you'll know that you're doing it right if what's inside the parentheses is the same thing. So notice here I've got a four x, sorry, four y plus three in both sets of parentheses. So I know I'm doing this right. And that is going to be one of my factors, the 4y plus 3. And the other factor is going to be the combination of the two GCFs that we factored out, the y minus 5. Really what's happening um, algebraically to get from the previous step to this one is we're actually factoring out the 4y plus 3 like it's a GCF. So like we're taking this out as a GCF, which would leave us with the y, plus, uh, y minus 5. So those are uh, our two um, factors for that one. Number 23, um, it looks like, is this divisible by 3? Yeah, I think it is. So what we want to do here first is just factor out that GCF of the 3, and that will make the factoring a lot easier. Uh, 36 divided by 3 is going to be 12, so minus 12x. And then 96 divided by 3 is going to be 32. And so um, here we want to find two factors that multiply to give me 32, but add up to negative 12. So they both have to be negative. So let's see here. We got negative 1 and negative 32. Obviously, that's not going to work. Um, negative 2 times negative 16. No. Um, it's not divisible by 3. Uh, is it divisible by 4? Yeah, so it would be negative 4, and oh, here we go. Negative 4 times negative 8. So we can factor this a little further here as x minus 4 times x minus 8. And the reason I'm picking those is because their sum is the negative 12x that I'm looking for. Uh, so here, this would be your answer for number 23. All right, for number 24, we've got 12x squared minus 37x plus 28. So to factor this, we're going to need to find two numbers that multiply to give me the product 12 and 28. With that, 12 and 28, 336. <laughs> And so what we need are two numbers that multiply to give me 336 but add up to negative 37. Now since the, this sum has got to be negative, we know the two numbers have to be negative. And so our two numbers that are going to work there uh, are going to be negative 21 and negative 16. And these do add up to negative 37. So we'll split that middle term up as 12x squared uh, minus 21x minus 16x plus 28. Then we'll divide out the GCF out of the first two terms, which, what would that be? 3x, get 4x minus 7. Then we can factor out a negative 4 out of the last group and get 4x uh, minus 7. Just like with the last time we did the factoring by grouping, you want to stop here and make sure that what's inside the parentheses is the same, which in this case it is got 4x minus 7 and both sets of parentheses. That's going to be one of our factors. And the other factor will be the combination of the GCFs, 3x minus 4. Number 25. We've got a difference of two squares. Actually, both 25 and 26 are going to be a difference of two squares situation. And um, basically, the way you factor a difference of two squares, uh, if you can write it in the form a squared minus b squared, you can factor this as a plus b times a minus b. 
So basically what you're trying to do is find the square root of each term, um, and that's going to be your a and b. So for 25, the square root of c squared is just c. The square root of 81 is 9, so we'll have c plus 9 times c minus 9. For number 26, we're going to have the square root of 4x squared is 2x, and the square root of 25 is 5, so I'll have 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. This can be, you can use this nice little shortcut to factor when you don't have that b term, you can factor it as a difference of two squares. 27 says Rudy was visiting the United States and he saw that the temperature in Cincinnati was 59 degrees Fahrenheit. Solve for C in this formula to find the Celsius temperature. So let's solve for C. First we'll subtract 32 from both sides. Then we'll multiply both sides by 5 and divide by 9. Another way of thinking about this is dividing by 9 fifths, which would be equivalent to multiplying by 5 ninths on both sides. Here's our formula to find the degrees Celsius. It says it was 59 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, so we're going to substitute in 59 for F. And just evaluate this. So I'm going to put this in my calculator. 5 ninths times 59 is 32. And give me 27. And 27 times 5 ninths will be 15. Get 15 degrees Celsius. <laughs> that is nice, Bullet. Okay, number 28 says a catering company determines the cost of providing food for an event uh, with this equation, C equals 8.5P plus 694, being the number of people that are attending the event. So A says, what's the cost of catering if there are 222 people attending the event? So this 222 people is going to be the P value, and we want to find the cost. So the cost, the 8.5 times 222 plus 694. Just throw that in your calculator. So the cost is going to be $2,581. B says how many people attended if the cost was $1,080. So here we're going to substitute that in for the cost rather than for P. And we're going to solve for P. Subtract 694 from both sides. Do 1,156 equals 8.5P. So we'll divide by that 8.5. Get 136. So we'll say we'll basically just copy what we um, what we said in the last state uh, part of the question. The cost is one thousand eight hundred fifty dollars uh, for one hundred thirty six people. Twenty nine says in two thousand thirteen, a couple rented an apartment for nine hundred eighty nine dollars. In twenty twenty three, the couple rented the same apartment for one thousand two hundred forty seven dollars. During this ten year period, assume that the rent increased each year in a linear pattern. Write a linear equation that expresses the rent 
as a function of the number of years, so that x equals 0 corresponds to 2013, and so on. Let's go ahead and write that equation. So we'll say, uh, yeah, so y, which is the rent of the apartment, equals the constant rate of change. All right, so this is where we have to figure out what is the rate of change. Now, from 2013 to 2023, okay, this is a 10-year span. So 10 years, and then the change in cost, right, so this is our, like, plus 10 here. And the change in cost, let's see, 1,247 minus 989 is 258. So that's going to be, that ratio of those two numbers is going to be our rate of change here. 258 over 10. Uh, X plus the original cost here, which is uh, $989 in 2013. This fraction can be reduced, I think. Let me uh, see if, how that reduces. 258 over 10. Both even, so definitely at least by 2. I think that might be it. Uh, so yeah, this, this would be 129 over 5. So there's your equation, and we can use that equation to answer part B, which says find the rent of the apartment in 2018. So 2018, that's going to be 5 years after 2013, so we're going to let x be 5. Say so y equals 129 over 5. Actually, times 5, so the arithmetic will work out kind of nicely here, uh, plus 989. Here we really just have 129 plus 989. It's going to be 1,118. So the rent of the apartment is $1,118 in 2018. I guess I should say was. So um, yeah, that's it for the word problems. We're kind of shifting gears here and we're going to solve some inequalities. So inequalities are solved much the same way that you solve an equation. The only real difference here is going to be to divide or multiply both sides by a negative. So when that happens, I'll, I'll you know, that, that one little step. But otherwise, we're still going to use our properties of equality to isolate the variable. So like here, we're still going to subtract four-fifths from both sides. And so when we do that, we're going to get, uh, you need to write this as a decimal as 2.2, or if you want to leave it as a fraction, 11 fifths. Same thing. Just make sure you have less than or equal to as your inequality symbol. So you could write it as either either one of these is fine. Number thirty-one. We're gonna first subtract four from both sides. And then uh, next we'll divide by negative six, and this is where things start to differ from solving an equation. Anytime you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, we're going to have to flip that inequality symbol. So that greater than is going to become a less than. The reason that's happening is because we are dividing by a negative specifically. Uh, this will also happen if you happen to multiply both sides by a negative, uh, but either way you will have to flip that, multi uh, that uh, inequality symbol. So we'll get x is less than 6. 32. Start by subtracting 3 from both sides. Let's try that again. Okay, so negative 29 minus 3 is going to be negative 32. And if we divide both sides by 8, we're going to get y is less than, or sorry, greater than or equal to negative 4. Notice here we're not flipping the sign. Um, even though there's a negative like involved in the division here, we're not dividing by a negative. 
dividing by positive 8, so the sign, the inequality symbol, will be maintained. Number 33. Um, I'll start by dividing both sides by negative 2. Um, dividing by that negative 2 is going to cause an inequality flip. So 64 divided by negative 2 would be 32. And then we'll subtract 12 from both sides to get negative uh, 44. So x is greater than negative 44. Number 34. Here I'll start with the distributive property, and on that, that last one, I could have started with the distributive property and just worked it from there, but I just thought it'd be easier to do, do the division first. We really don't have that option here in 34. Uh, since we do have the distributive property on both sides, we're just going to go going to have to go ahead and do that. So I have 4t plus 3 is greater than 5t uh, plus 5. Ooh, I almost missed that. That should be minus 12. Then I'll subtract 5t from both sides. So that give me negative 1t minus 12 is greater than 5. And I'll add 12 to both sides and get uh, negative t is greater than 17. And when I divide both sides by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative, I do have to flip the symbol, and so I get t is less than negative 17. That's about it for inequalities. Notice there's no like compound inequalities or anything like that. All going to be pretty straightforward. Number 35 says, says during the spring semester a student made the following quiz grades. What is the mean value of the test grade? So we're kind of shifting gears here again, moving away from quadratics and towards probability and statistics. So to find the mean value, what you have to do is add up all the values and divide by how many there are. So the mean is going to be 67 plus 73 plus 79. We're going to add up all these grades and then divide by how many there are. So let's see, one, two, three, six, seven, eight. And we'll just put all this in the calculator. This one I'm not even gonna bother trying to do it by hand. Seven plus 79 plus 82. Plus 87 plus 95, 97, and a final 100 divided by eight, and we get 85. the median value is if you put all these um, numbers in order the median value is going to be the middle value so I'm just gonna like reorder these as I type them in so 67 73 79 82 actually these are already in order so you don't even have to rearrange them all right so I'm just gonna kind of mark these off say okay so uh, you know 67 and 100 like one one data point in you just kind of work your way towards the middle here okay so now here we've got two middle values um, so if you have an even number of values like this then what you have to do is find the mean of these two values so to find this median we're gonna have to find the mean of 82 and 87 um, which Let's go ahead and jump to the calculator here. 82 and 87 is going to be 169 divided by 2 is 84 and a half. Now if you have an odd number of values, it will just be whatever that number is. Like if there was one extra number, let's say 101 was out here, then 87 would be the median. But if you have a, you know, an even number, you're going to end up with two numbers in the middle. So you just find the mean of those two values. This is, if a student earns an 88, a 78, and a 72 on the first three tests, what score do they need? Their fourth test have an average of 80 for all of their tests. So this is really a mean question. So the mean is going to be 80. So 80 is going to be 88 plus 78 plus 72 plus the score on that fourth test divided by a total of four tests. So we can solve this by multiplying both sides by 4. 80 times 4 is 320. We could also add up these three numbers. 88 plus 78 plus 72 is 238. And then finally, subtract 238 from both sides, and we'll get our final answer here, 320 
minus 238 is 82. So in order to have an average of an 80 for all four tests, they would need to get an 82 on that fourth test. And that about wraps it up. That is the last problem on this final exam review. Thanks, y'all, for watching. And if you do have any questions or want anything clarified, please reach out. You can either uh, send me an email um, you know, or ask me in class. Or if you are watching this and you are not in one of my classes, feel free to uh, ask a question in the comments, and I'll get back to you. Uh, but that's about it for today. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you next time.